and Frank Lucas, we interviewed him. Uh, you know, he had a relationship with, with um, Bumpy Johnson. He was, I guess, his driver at one point. And I guess he ended up testifying against a bunch of dirty cops as well. I don't know if he testified against other people as well, but is that considered a no-no, testifying against cops? Testifying against anybody is considered a no-no. I mean, we're not supposed to do that, um, you know, at least in our life. You know, we're not supposed to give information or testify at any point in time against anybody. That's what we're told. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be looked at as poorly as if you testified against one of your own. Um, but uh, we're not supposed to do that. Gotcha. Now, before you were actually made a, a made man, you had a situation with uh, P Paul uh, Castellano? Yes. Am I pronouncing it correctly? That's correct, yes. Okay. And uh, Paul Castellano, well, he was known as the Howard Hughes, the Howard Hughes of the mob. Why was he given that name? Because of his business acumen, he was a very wealthy guy, and he was, uh, you know, allegedly more legitimate than he was, you know, a street guy, more of a legitimate guy and a businessman. And, uh, you know, so they viewed him in that way, and not necessarily favorably. I, I didn't hear a lot of good things about Paul Castellano during my time before he got murdered. Um, and, you know, my one encounter with him that was, you know, a problem you know, I, I didn't care for him too much either, but, you know, it was my opinion. Right, and he was the head of the Gambino crime family, and I guess at the time, that was the most powerful family? Yeah, Gambino, Genovese, you know, they were the biggest families, so people looked at them as being the most powerful families, but, you know, that's, that's subjective. You know, if you ask Persico, we were the most powerful, but, you know, the Gambino and the Genovese, by the numbers, uh, were bigger than us, and, and therefore they might have had more power than us. Okay, and you had a situation over some chicken uh, with Paul. That's correct. Uh, can you describe that? Yeah, I had a market uh, out in Long Island, and you know, it was one of those markets that had a butcher shop and a seafood and fruits and vegetables, and uh, we were told that we had to buy our chicken. Paulie was in the chicken business. I think Frank, Far Frank Pardue was his partner. So we had to buy our chicken and our poultry from Paul. So I, I had a big order. It was a Memorial Day weekend. We bought a big order from him, and somebody came in, and uh, we sold him a big order for the Memorial Day weekend. Well, the day after, on a Tuesday, they came back and said they couldn't use any of the chickens because they had maggots in them. They were bad. So I called up uh, Paul's guy at that time, who I didn't know was a made guy, and I said, we're, uh, we're returning the chickens, and I'm not paying you for them. And he started cussing me out on the phone. He said, no, you're paying for them. I said, no, we're not. I said, you know, we had them in the refrigerator one day. They couldn't have gone bad. I'm not paying you. So he started cursing me out. I started cursing him out back. You know, we went this big fight on the phone, you know. And I said, I'm not paying you. Come and pick them up, or I'll throw them in the garbage. And, you know, the next morning, I get a call from my captain at the time and said, get into Brooklyn right away. So I go into Brooklyn, and he tells me, what was this conversation you had with uh, Paulie's guy on the phone? He said he was a made guy. You cursed him out. I said, well, he cursed me out. I didn't know who he was. So he said, well, Paulie's very upset, and you're going to have to buy back the chickens. I said, I, why would I buy them? I said, they were bad chickens. You know, this was, uh, it was over chickens, right? So we actually had a sit down with Paul. I mean, he was really upset about this and his guy. And I was told, and my boss was there. So because Paulie was a boss, I had to have a boss at the time, Tom, De Tom DeBella and Andrew Russo. They were my two guys. So, uh, I mean, he was really upset with me. You cursed my guy out. I said, well, I didn't know who he was. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't know that he was, uh, you're only a recruit. Who are you to talk like that to a made guy? I said, Paulie, I'm telling you, I didn't know he was a made guy. I don't know who he is. He was on the other end of the phone. Back and forth, back and forth. And the way the decision came down afterwards is I didn't have to pay for the chickens, but I had to continue using Paulie as my supplier. So that's how it worked out. But uh, I mean, he was very, very upset with me. You know, he called me all sorts of names and so on and so forth. And, you know, after it was all over, when we drove away, uh, my boss and, uh, and my captain, they started laughing about it. They said, this is the biggest deal we ever had over chickens in our life. And, 
you know, it, it turned out to be a joke with us. But uh, it was serious at the moment, let me tell you, because he was upset. So for a guy to get that upset over a couple of hundred bucks, because that's really all it was, uh, you can tell that money was uh, very important to him. Well, why would a boss meet with a recruit of another family? Wouldn't that be handled on a more higher level? Well, yeah, but my boss was there too. I mean, this became a major sit down basically because number one, I refused to pay. And number two, I was disrespectful to another mob guy, uh, a maid guy, I should say, who was related to Paulie at the time, was his nephew or his cousin, I don't know who he was. But uh, so I was disrespectful to a maid guy, plus I refused to pay. So those were two major things at that point in time. Why Paulie had to come and get involved in this, again, you're right. I, I agree with you. Instead of just saying, it's a couple of hundred dollars, handle it or whatever, this went up to that level where my boss and the boss of the Gambino family had to get involved in a major sit-down over a couple hundred dollars worth of chickens and my being disrespectful on the other end of the phone to another made guy. That was that big a deal he made out of it. Was there a chance that you could have gotten killed in that meeting? You know, I don't know if it went that far, but it might have been that they would have stripped me of my ability to get made because I was disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, it, it could have went that far. But my guy stood up for me in a big way. Honestly, I was right. I mean, I wasn't wrong. You sell me chickens that I can't resell because they got maggots in them. I only had them in my refrigerator one day, so it couldn't have been my fault. You know, and then you start cursing me out on the other end of the phone. I mean, I was right in that argument. So... Uh, they went to bat for me in a big way, and we resolved it. But, yeah, I mean, they could have at least, you know, stripped me of my ability to become a made guy. They could have done that.